Hi everybody, my name is Darcy Gray and I'm the Community Engagement Manager for Symphony Nova Scotia. Uh, with me here today is my friend and our concert master, uh, Renaud Lapierre. Uh, Renaud, thanks for coming. Thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure. Uh, so Renaud is going to talk about the violin. So this particular instrument that you have, where is it from? It's from France. Mm -hmm. It's uh, actually a Jean-Baptiste Viome mm -hmm. uh, from 1855. 1855, so that's... 175 years approximately? Something like this, yes. So 175 years and nobody's dropped it or run over it with a car or had their horse step on it and it's amazing. Yes, yes. Well, that's some, some aged things and yeah. uh, it has to be checked and some, it's not perfect, but yeah. for, for the, the, that age and the, the way it is, the condition is very good, yes. Can you just do a quick demo of, like, play your lowest note for us? Mm -hmm. And realistically, how high can you play? Joking. <laughs> Joking. Maybe there's possibility with harmonics, yep. which you trick the, the string. Yep. Something like that. You can always go higher, but... Have you brought something that you'd like to play for us today? Yes, yes, I've, I've brought a, um, a little um, a small movement. I will even shorten the, like the, the repeats and all, but it's a movement from the second violin sonata, solo violin sonata, the Andante movement. So this is going back to the 18th century, correct? Yes, yes, uh, Bach dies exactly in 1750, something? so it's, yeah. Um, did a violin look like that back at that time? More or less? Pretty much. At that time, the violin was pretty much like this. This is, a, if I remember correct, a Guarnerius uh, model, which Guarnerius mm -hmm. was in 16, 1600s. Okay. So that the guy in 1855 still does a model based on 200 years prior right. means that they've already reached the peak of the quality of the instrument at that time. That makes a lot of sense. Was the bow pretty much the same back then as what you have now? Well, the bow at first looked a lot like a bow, actually, an actual bow, an arrow. Is that where it gets its name? Do you know? I do think so, like yeah. Like it, was pretty much, it was pretty much looking yeah. like this, like uh, when Prior to the violin itself, there yep. was the viola di braccia, mm -hmm. which was pretty much hold, held like this, but it was way thicker and way... Yep. And you, you could only like hold these instruments low. You can move much higher. It was like first to third position only. But uh, yes, and then with the, the bow, the bow evolution, um, they changed this big arc uh, to this, this uh, way. Mm -hmm. So you have, and this tip here, exactly, so you have uh, equal pressure all through. So you yeah. can have a longer, longer sound all through and almost a not never stopping sound, right. which the arc had some, you know, like well, you, you can pull it, you see that it's way, way softer here and more, more tense on these sides. So. Okay. I want to ask you a little bit about your job now. So I, you are the concert master. Um, what does that mean in the context of an orchestra? That means basically that um, I have to have a good relation with the orchestra and the conductor mm -hmm. um, to understand sometimes what the conductor asks and is not well represented between us. It means that I have to be responsible for tuning the orchestra in a, uh, agreement with the first oboe, mm -hmm. uh, which our tuning is generally A440. Um, other than that, I shake the end of the conductor. I have this great honor. Yeah. And uh, sometimes I walk on, although these, these things tend to, to uh, change a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so thanks so much. I'd love to hear this Bach. Sure.
Awesome, thank you. I think that's my favorite movement of all those box sonatas. So I'm, I'm really, <laughs> I feel lucky that you chose that today. Uh, thanks so much, Renaud. Thank you everybody for watching and I hope we will see you at a concert very soon.